okay so a very good evening students uh, let me check is it working yeah just wait yeah so am i audible i think i am audible now so yeah so a very good evening to all of you so what we'll be doing today we'll be taking uh 10 to 15 questions students on the recent advances which has happened or which in community medicine which i presume that we should be you know we should be knowing it so it's very important that we have to be you know for I mean, a consistent we should be aware about the recent advances which we which which is happening across, across community medicine so a very good evening to all good evening sonam so let's start and i'll take my pen just wait so it's here yeah. so as i do always so i'm on academy platform you can have a iconic subscription and that iconic subscription where you have the you get the best of on academy live classes batch courses live tests quizzes and you will also get the best of pre planner video lectures question banks and rapid revision courses so this is the way you can get the subscription 12 month 18 months 24 months 36 month and in the plus classes you get basically the uh, the uh, the live classes you have live tests you can interact with educators different educators of the country and it has got a very structured schedule which you can also download it and you can read as and when required so these are the various you know uh, subscription package one month three months six month and all so it's all there right so let's start students let's start with the first question you must have heard about a program called kaya kalp so kaya kalp scheme was launched as an extension of so kaya kalp uh, scheme was launched as an extension of was it extended as a extension of swachh bharat mission laksh or it is pradhan mantri surakshit matritva abhiyan or pradhan mantri matritva vandana yojana so what do you think this kaya kalp you know is this an extension of swachh bharat mission or is it an extension of laksh pmsma or pradhan mantri matrut vandana yojana just try students anyone is it swachh bharat mission is it laksh it is pmsma it is pmmvy anyone Come on, try Sonam Prachi. Anyone can try. What do you think? Kaya Kalp scheme was launched as an extension of. Okay, Prachi goes with B. Anyone else wants to try? Okay. Kaya Kalp is basically a scheme which was launched as an extension of students' Swachh Bharat mission. Please remember. and how it is linked to swachh bharat mission i'll explain it so whenever you whenever anyone is talking about no siddharth navin sonam goes with a i am saying kaya kalp scheme is an extension of swachh bharat mission not related to laksh not related to pradhan mantri surakshit matritva abhiyan and not related to pradhan mantri matritva vandana yojana it is an extension of swachh bharat mission now as you all know students kaya kalp scheme was launched on 15th may 2015 and this is an extension of swachh bharat mission why i say this is an extension of swachh bharat mission because if you remember in 2014 2 october we had this swachh bharat mission launched so this kaya kalp is an extension of swachh bharat mission so what is the objective of kaya kalp its objective is to promote cleanliness hygiene ipc infection prevention control infection control practices 
in public health facility so it is basically talking about hygiene so hygiene cleanliness and all it is talking about so it is an extension of swachh bharat mission now so any facility which falls under the criteria of kayakal they get award also so for example the district hospital can get get award sub divisional hospital chc phc upsc and all the government body so the kayakal program is not only restricted to the level of healthcare delivery system but it has also it has it has extended to central government other institution also and student now it has also extended to private hospital also so how do we remember it is an extension of swachh bharat mission all the public health facility falls under this central institution falls under this private hospitals also now falls under this and now they have also linked this with mera aspatal initiative you must be knowing about mera aspatal initiative in the last class i had a, i talked about this here any person visiting any person visiting any hospital they have they can give a feedback within 7 days of their visit about their about their what they experienced as far as treatment is concerned the satisfaction was good average poor so this kayakal program is also integrating with mera aspatal initiative so what point we have to remember kayakal is an extension of swachh bharat mission it in, it talks about cleanliness hygiene and infection control practices in public health institution central government institution private hospital also and it is also linked with mera aspatal initiative so these are the important points which you should know okay let's come to the second question students joint initiative of ministry of health and family welfare and ministry of drinking water and sanitation now which is known as ministry of jal shakti is what what is that joint initiative by mo ministry of health and family welfare and ministry of jal shakti it is the program pmsma is it laksh is it suman is it swachh swasth sarvatra try this students come on siddharth skr navin sonam prachi sundar babu sundar balu sundar ji balu anyone so what do you think the joint initiative by ministry of health and family welfare and ministry of drinking water and sanitation is what is it pmsma is it laksh is it suman is it swachh swasth sarvastha siddharth goes with d anyone else navin goes with d very good okay yes so ministry of health and family welfare and ministry of jal shakti now don't call it now it is called as jal shakti in initially it was uh, before this it was called as ministry of drinking water and sanitation the joint initiative is swachh swasth sarvatra triple s so you should remember this what will help you it is a con a connecting and complementing the achievement of swachh bharat mission and kayakal so you link it student swachh bharat mission first started then we have kayakal now swachh swasth sarvastra is a just a just a uh, means combination of both and it initially it was focusing on rural area now it is also focusing on urban area so in 2019 this triple s which is swachh swasth sarvastra has been extended in urban area in close collaboration or coordination between ministry of housing and urban affairs and ministry of health and family welfare so this is about triple s okay great let's let's take the third question government of india under poshan abhiyan has fortified how many staple foods how many staple foods have been fortified under poshan abhiyan it is four is it five is it six is it three try this how many staple foods 
have been fortified under Poshan Abhyan. Prachi goes with C. Anyone else? Try students, everyone. Nowadays, Poshan Abhyan, initially Poshan Abhyan was called as National Nutrition Mission, but that name has changed into Poshan Abhyan. So Siddharth goes with B, Balu goes with B. Okay. Yes. So under Poshan Abhyan, five staple foods, five staple foods have been fortified. Very right. Now, sir, you have to also see this plus F. This is a symbol. If you see this symbol, plus F. So it is called fortified. Sampurn portion swasth jivan. So this is the slogan. So all fortified foods can be identified. How do you identify that the food is fortified? By a blue plus F logo on the packet. So if you see any food where this logo is there, plus F, it means it is fortified. This has been released by Food Safety and Standard Authority of Government of India. And it is fortified with micronutrients. Now, what are those micronutrients? We know in India the staple food is wheat. Wheat is fortified with iron, folic acid, vitamin A, vitamin B12, sorry. Similarly, rice is also fortified with the same iron, folic acid, vitamin B12. So, this wheat and rice cereals are basically fortified with iron, folic acid, and vitamin B12. But these are both are staple foods. Come to salt. Salt already it, is for, it was fortified with iodine, now we are also fortifying with iron. So a double fortification with iron and, and iodine. Oil, fortified with vitamin A and vitamin D. And milk, fortified with vitamin A and D. So you know all these five are staple foods. This is consumed on a daily basis. So the under portion of Bian, all this have been fortified under the logo if you see plus F. So please remember plus means for addition and fortification means that they have been added by micronutrients. So iron, folic acid, vitamin B12 for wheat and rice. Salt we already know. Oil and milk will remember with vitamin A and vitamin D. Okay. So it's the new one you should all know students. Okay. Let's take the next question. Fourth. National health policy target by 2022 what do you target by 2022 so our nhp national health policy 2017 targets what by 2022 this is very specific establish daily as a measure of burden or trend of disease maternal mortality to 100 life expectancy to 70 imr to 28 try this students these are all things which we should know so what is the answer on this national policy target by 2022 what what is by 2022 what do we want to achieve is it establishing daily as a measure of burden of disease mmr to 100 increase life expectancy to 70 and imr to 28 come on students try anyone okay Anyone who can try the anyone can come with the answer. Try this. Yeah, okay. I can see Palu goes with D. Naveen goes with D. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. So the answer to this question is establish daily as a measure of burden or trend of disease. You know, okay, let me explain this. You know, students, what is DALI? DALI is Disability Adjusted Life Years. So, this is a very good indicator. This is a very good indicator to measure burden of disease. Why? Because it measures what? Mortality. And it also measures morbidity. So, we have one indicator which is called DALI. Now, this has to be achieved by 2022. So, you know students, whenever we read any disease, 
so we say no how many people die now for example covid 80 lakh people has, has suffered from covid out of that more than 1 lakh people died so you are expressing in terms of morbidity and mortality so daily is a indicator which is used to measure both so national health policy 2020 uh, 2017 has set a target that let's establish daily country wise to measure the burden of disease now always nhp 2017 when we talk it has got targets with respect to years so in 2017 we'll eliminate kalazar lymphatic filariasis 2018 it is leprosy 2019 was imr 28 so one of the option was imr 28 but that is till 2019 2020 you see mmr 100 hiv aids 90s to 90s to 92 prevalence of tobacco use by 15% and 30% by 2025 access to safe water and sanitation to all swachh bharat mission occupational injury reduction by 50% and state health is expanding by greater than 80% so this is till 2022 20 sorry 2020 this was the question which was asked by 2022 what do you expect you expect that will establish daily as a measure of burden and trend of the disease so whenever you are revising national health policy so 2017 18 19 20 20 22 and 2025 these are the years which has been set for different indicators so just revise in that way you will not have any problem okay let's move fast let's take the fifth question a contact is a person who has been exposed to a covid 19 case from how many days before to how many days after the case onset of illness now covid we must be very much clear on covid so the, this question is related to contact so when do you say a person is a contact if he comes to a exposed covid 19 case from how many days before to how many days after the case of onset of illness try this students anyone uh is us anyone so whom do you call a covid case covid contact sorry is it a uh, means how many days before and how many days after you take as, as a contact delina goes with a parag goes with c okay our asma kashik goes with b mixed responses students okay the answer to this question is a now how do you remember this you remember this as you remember this as take onset of illness so for example what is today students it is 31st october no so today i have symptoms of covid so i'll go two days before so that will be 29 and i'll add 14 days after so if i add 14 days so i'll be around uh, 14 november so i am a confirmed case onset of illness is 31st october 2 days before and 14 days after those people who came in contact with me in between 29th october till 14th november they are called as contact case it should be crystal clear students so date of onset is very important 2 days before 14 days after so total happens to be 16 days so between that anyone who comes in contact with that confirmed case is a contact simple okay now when you know that contact so what is you what we do for the contact we do contact tracing so period of contact tracing for asymptomatic covid patient now this is a very tricky question you have to do contact tracing so you, first of all in the previous question i said that 31st is my date of i give an example 31st october is the date of onset of symptom i am a confirmed covid today is my onset case uh, onset of illness 
So I said go two days before and I said go 14 days after. All those people who will come in contact with this case is a contact. Good, but here the question is saying you have to do contact tracing for asymptomatic. I don't exhibit any symptom now. So how will you decide that what is the period of contact tracing? So just try that. So I can see Kaushik is going with A. 5 days before to 10 days after. Okay. Anyone else who wants to try this? You don't have the confirmed COVID patient without any symptom. They don't have any symptoms soon. There is asymptomatic cases we are finding it out. Here also go with the same philosophy which I gave 2 and 14. The only thing is that you have to remember the sample collection date. Yes, Jalina. Just remember the sample collection date. I'll explain it. I am a COVID patient, right? How I did? I am not having any symptom. I went for a, you know, a screening test. I, I traveled from somewhere. I went for a screening test. I gave the sample. When I gave the sample, suppose I gave the sample today. 31st October and I am I then I came to know I am positive now so I am a COVID case but I am asymptomatic so sample collection is 31st so please consider this date again go two days before and 14 days after students same uh, mechanism the only thing changes is since the person is asymptomatic please take the date of sample collection as a day two days before and 14 days after okay so this is about contact tracing of asymptomatic symptomatic it is easy you have symptom today two days before 14 days after but for asymptomatic you have to take the date of sample collection okay now seventh one on an average there would be how many contacts per covid case one covid case on an average will have how many contacts try this is it on an average 40 50 20 30 so one covid case will have how many contact on an average okay Nina Kumari going with D Rachi going with D anyone else ask my question going with C Okay. Yes, so one COVID patient is expected to have on an average 30 contact students. Please remember 30 contacts. Okay. Yes, we are expecting 30 contacts. Very good. Let's take the next question. Percentage of contacts should be traced. How many, what should be the percentage of contact? that will be traced and put under quarantine within 72 hours. So, if I give you an example, so within 72 hours, how many people should be traced? How many contacts should be traced? Is it 70%, 90%, 80%, 60%? Try this. Just try this. How many, what is the percentage of tracing of contacts within 72 hours? What do we expect? B, 90%, somebody is saying 60, okay. No, students, 80%. Let's keep the C. So the answer is C, 80%. So A, let's write me, let, let me write here 80. 80% 80 of contact should be traced and put under quarantine within 72 hours okay so this is the important thing so i have already explained now let's take the next question choice of diagnostic test as a part of surveillance in containment zone and screening at point of entry is so what is the choice of diagnostic test in the containment zone is it rapid antigen test followed by RT-PCR, TrueNet or CBNAT or is it RT-PCR, TrueNet, CBNAT test followed by uh, 
rat or only rat or only artipecia try this students okay, so that I think going with C Balu going with A C okay now imagine students there is a containment zone so containment zone why it has been decide, decided that this the area is a containment zone because you are expecting you have covid cases also and you are expecting more number of cases you don't want people to go outside neither you want people to come inside so it is a containment zone so you what do you want you want to test all the person in that containment zone now imagine you have to test all the person in the containment zone so which test is feasible or will you go with rt pcr first or will you go with rat test think in that way students a containment zone you want to test all the person ideally all the person should be tested because it is a sealed area so you want to see how many people have developed covid case so which test will be prioritized whether you will go with rat or rt pcr since you have to test all the person ideally so we will we will you be using rat first followed by rt pcr because rat is easy to perform half an hour you get the result rt pcr true nat simira takes time so it is important let's go with rat and then i am not saying that you cannot go with rt pcr you can go with rt pcr also but the priority is given to rat why because you have to cover the entire population in that containment zone so rat test followed by rt pcr okay i'll explain this second take with the tech, next question 10 choice of diagnostic test as a part of surveillance in non containment area you don't you don't have a containment zone now suppose i am in a non containment zone which test to be used is it rat test followed by rt pcr or is it rt pcr followed by rat Yes, try in this students, this question number 10, okay, Mahalakshmi goes with C, only rat, okay, some goes with B, Parag goes with C, no, students think, to back previous question, containment zone, so in containment zone, you, you have a doubt that maybe many people are suffering from COVID, so let's go and test with our rat test. Now you are, a person is from a non-containment area, you don't, you, it's not a containment zone. So if I am ha having any sign and symptom, I belong from a non-containment area, I go for testing. Which test you will do for on me? Definitely you should do on me RT-PCR because you don't have to test more number of people. So you, but you want to be double sure by doing RT-PCR. Why? Because I am the only person. So you are, we don't have many number of patients there. So in a non-containment area, the priority is given to RT-PCR because whatever RT-PCR result will be there, it will be correct. There is a possibility of false report by our rat, but there is no possibility of false by RT-PCR. So in non-containment zone, we prefer first RT-PCR true nat c binet followed by rat. The logic is simple programmatic students. It's not that you cannot use rat, you can use rat also. But it's important that why should we use rat and if it gives something false report, then again we have to push, again we have to use RT-PCR. So better to use RT-PCR, one patient has come one or two and it doesn't fall in the containment area. So that is the logic of using RT-PCR first. Okay. One more thing I'll explain here, there is, a, every, there is always confusion. Whenever you are applying a rat test, rapid antigen test, if it is positive, it is declared positive students. If it is negative, then you have to see whether the person is having symptom or not. If the person is negative by rat test and the person is having symptom, the person has to go for RT-PCR to confirm it. If the person is negative by rat and doesn't exhibit any sign and symptom, he, does, he will not go for any other testing. Again in future if it turns out to be symptomatic, 
then he may go with RAT and RT-PCR. Okay, so this is the clause for okay. Now, come to the next question. I'll answer Pramod Kumar's question. He has asked something. I'll answer your question. Just give me one minute. MCQ, let's take 11. Community based assessment checklist form is used for early detection of NCD and now this is a new one, student. CBAC form you must have heard. Community based assessment checklist is used for detection of NCD and tuberculosis, measles, COVID, and malaria. I'll answer Siddharth your question also. Just take this question, then I'll answer your question. Community based assessment checklist form is used for early detection of NCD and try this. So, CBAC form is used for what? Detection of NCD and any other disease TB, measles, COVID, malaria. Pankaj goes with C, Sitpara goes with C, Balu goes with A. Okay. Students, please remember. CBAC form was basically used for screening of NCD. NCD when I say you are screening diabetes, hypertension and the cancers. Earlier CBAC form was restricted to NCD only but now it has also it also include TB. So Balu is absolutely correct it includes TB. So please remember this students. TB has, is also a part of CBAC form now. I will show you the new CBAC form. Earlier it was not there. So this is the CBAC form. CBAC form for early detection of NCD and TB also. Now TB has been added in this. Though it is a communicable disease but it is a part of now CBAC form. So general information, ASHA, MPW, you write the detail of, of general information. Then you go with part A which is risk assessment what is the age, smoking pattern, alcohol pattern, waste measurement, no physical activity doing or not, any history. Just see this part they have added now. Shortness of breath, coughing more than two weeks, blood in sputum, fever for greater than two weeks. So TB component they have added. This was not, if this was not present earlier. Now TB component is also added. So this has been a change made in CPAC form. Now coming to two questions which first I will answer Pramod. Pramod is asking will I get all classes PDF orderly? I, I have only time to see PDF. Now Pramod, this is a YouTube session so you can watch n number of times whenever you want. Second, if you are joining an academy platform. So an academy platform there if you are a plus member you can download, you can see, watch n number of times. And if you, there are special classes also taken where anyone can join, those special classes can be also seen or downloaded by you. So that is a benefit there. Second, coming to Siddharth question, is RT-PCR, RT-PCR is the gold standard Siddharth, absolutely correct, no doubt in that. But what I am saying, in a containment zone, suppose you have to do testing of 1000 people. So if you do RT-PCR and you have an option of RAT also, you have to test all. So obviously this is easy to do. Let's go with this. This is not bad test. This is not a gold standard but definitely this is not bad. So let's go with this and then any doubt is there then we can go with RT-PCR. But in a non-containment zone, two patient is only there. Two patient when I say two suspects. And then you have to do a testing. There is no, you don't have to test 1000 people. So then here I go with RT-PCR. RT-PCR definitely happens to be the gold standard. So no doubt in that. But this is the priority to make maximum utilization of resources and getting benefit out of that. So 1000 people I have to do testing. I will do RT-PCR in a one area. RT-PCR, it will take more time, more money, everything. Let's go with RT uh, RAT test. We have that facility. So we. We'll, it doesn't mean you cannot do RT PCR. Priority is given to RAT followed by RT PCR. I said priority to RAT followed by RT PCR. 
if you have doubt you can go for rt pcr not a problem but that is the priority in a non containment zone there is no priority is given to rt pcr i'll give you one more example in a hospital setting somebody is going for any other treatment and covid testing has to be done for that patient i will we will not re recommend rat first go for the rt pcr because they are also already in hospitalized condition so let's go for rt pcr so now if you are conducting a screening if you, screening the moment you say student screening means you are initiating no you are initiating so you want to suppose you want to you know it is it doesn't fall under containment zone thing it's a normal area what you want to go for a screening so go for a rat followed by rt pcr but it is a no it's it's nobody has it's not going for screening suspect has come to you you are going for testing go for rt pcr students it's not mandatory that we cannot go cannot do rt pcr or cannot do rat this is the priority set by icmr for maximum utilization of resources let's restrict this to this it's not that rt pcr cannot be done or rat cannot be done anything can be done local lo locally the administration has to decide but the guideline icmr what the guideline has divided into containment zone non containment zone hospital setting containment zone preferably rat followed by rt pcr non containment hospital preferably rt pcr followed by rat this is the simple logic okay i hope no sidar rt pcr when you do for a person you will not do rat why will you do rat so in a non containment zone you go for rt pcr when you have gone for rt pcr you you should not go for rat i am saying you have to choose between two tests so the first choice will be rt pcr correct in non containment zone then you don't have to do rat absolutely correct but i am saying suppose you have to select rt pcr and in between rt pcr and rat and rt pcr you are not able to do due to any reason then you can go for rat also second priority every time you cannot go for the first priority there is a possibility that you may not have uh, uh, the you know the resources the logistics are not there you have logistic for rat you are not having logistic for rt pcr so the second priority always everyone cannot be first second priority is given to rat one thing i will make it clear as when you are when anyone has gone for rt pcr there is no point of talking about rat this is the priority set by icmr i am saying that students don't get confused in this siddharth is it clear any doubt it's not that from rt pcr after rt pcr we'll go for rat we'll not go for rat once a patient has gone for rt pcr why will i go for rat is it clear siddharth you see this i'll just show you this see this a non containment area so the choice of choice of test first choice i give to rt pcr in order of priority and then i give second priority i give to rat yes so see this slide if i if i'm just i just brought this slide so that you it's clear in non containment area the priority is given to rt pcr then the second priority is rat so no confusion second priority doesn't mean that a person who has gone for rt pcr will go for rat why the person will go for rat no he will not go for rat but if you have not done if you are not able to do rt pcr then you can go for rat okay i hope uh siddharth the doubt is clear okay thank you students it was a great discussion and i i i i i want you all people to you know think in this way why not this why not that
in community medicine you have to talk in this way then it makes the topics very easy interesting and you remember this for a longer period of time with that note students thank you very much for watching take care bye bye